So before you actually buy your first mining ship, um, there's some mining builds on my spreadsheet, and you're going to have to earn some money. So you can do this by running missions, uh, winging up with people to take maybe go do a little bounty hunting, things like that. To build this first mining ship, um, you're going to need about 3.8 million credits. And you're going to want a little bit more than that. That way you have insurance rebuy just in case you get splattered. Um, but, you know, it, it's going to be well worth it. Because in your first trip, you're going to be able to make something to the effect of 19 million just in your first load. So um, if you already have a bit more money than that, um, another option you could do is you could do this Type 7 miner. I think it costs something in the ballpark of 25 to 30 million. Um, and it's able to haul a lot more cargo and mine a lot more at once. But for those of us that are just starting out, uh, this t Type 6 newbie miner um, is the perfect ship for it. So take this link out of my spreadsheet and pull it up on Coriolis, and we're going to take a quick look at the build. Um, so basically it's got a couple size 1 mining lasers. Perfect. Um, that's how you're going to get the stuff out of the rocks. Um, you've got a couple size 5 cargo bays. Um, they're 32 tons each, so that means you're going to be able to haul 64 tons of cargo. That's pretty good. Um, you're going to have a couple collector limpet controllers. These are the limpets. They're going to go pick up your uh, materials. Um, you're going to have a shield. That way it protects your ship, obviously. Um, a prospector limpet controller. This little guy Basically, you shoot the prospector at the rock, and it'll tell you what's in the rock. Um, you'll have a refinery. The refinery is the part that's going to melt down the ore and turn it into the precious bars. Um, and then you're going to want a detailed surface scanner. And basically, this will allow you to send a probe into the ring to find where the hot spots are, um, which are the good places to mine. Um, for your core internals, uh, just stick with the standard armor. Um, you're going to need a little bit beefier power plant to power all of this mining equipment. Um, also, I go with the D thrusters. Now, each of these modules, they have an A through an E, okay? And basically, the E is the worst that comes stock on the ship. E for economy, okay? D are very affordable, lightweight versions. Um, so they're light, the lightest. And they're pretty affordable. So a lot of the time you'll use D stuff. Um, the, the C is kind of mediocre. The C has the same weight as the E and the A's. Um, the B is armored. B is kind of heavy. Um, so you don't typically use a whole lot of B unless you're building like a combat ship or something like that. And then the A's are your most optimal. And they are the most expensive. Um, so like for example... These 4D thrusters, if we come down here to our costs, 4D thrusters, 59,000 credits, okay? If we were to change those to A's, which actually use more power than we have, so we couldn't use them anyways, but the A's, 4A thrusters cost 1.6 million, okay? So that's, that's way more than we want to spend on this build, and really, honestly, you don't need them. Um, with the 4D thrusters you're already going to be able to boost to 363 meters per second, so, which is plenty for this little Type 6 cargo ship. Um, the one thing I would recommend getting an A grade, though, is the frame shift drive. Okay? This is what dictates how far you can jump, um, so it's well worth the 1.6 million, especially because you're going to be going on a mining trip, um, so you're probably going to travel 100 light years, um, so you want this uh, frame shift drive, okay? Uh, life support, we go with the lightest, the 2D. Uh, power distributor, so the power distributor is what powers your lasers. Um, it also powers like your boosting and things like that. So you want a little bit beefier one. Uh, the B puts out plenty of power, um, and so that's a good way to go. If you have the money, you could go with the A. That would be even better. Um, but the B will do you just fine. Uh, sensors. Uh, the, the higher the sensor, the more power it uses and the longer range it has, and also they're heavier. Uh, the, the 2D, though, is plenty. It's light, it's cheap, um, it, and it's plenty for mining, okay? So this is kind of your basic mining build. 
I will say that one thing uh, to start out with, you may want to put a fuel scoop on here instead of one of these collector limpet controllers. Um, so if you come down here, grab a fuel scoop, you know, something like the 4C, um, it'll take one minute to completely fill your tank. That's not bad. Um, if you could afford it, you could get a 4A, but a 4A fuel scoop is 2.8 million credits. Um, but it only takes 46 seconds to fill, so that's not even that good of an improvement. Uh, 4B, 54 seconds. The 4B costs 715,000 credits. So, I don't know. I would probably go with the 4C and call it good. Um, the other thing about this Coriolis website is it shows all your power. And so, you know, when you're planning your build, sometimes you turn things off that you're not going to use in combat. Um, and you can also set priorities so that if your power plant takes damage, it'll shut certain things off first, like your cargo hatch. A lot of people will set that to five. That way, if you take damage or something, um, your cargo hatch gets shut off. A lot of people will set the shield to like two or three priority. Um, lasers, maybe make those a four you know, so on and so forth. Uh, fuel scoop, probably a five. Olympic controller, four or three. I don't know, it just depends where it's at on the priorities for you. Um, refinery, you could set that. Same thing with uh, prospector controller. Uh, usually the core systems, like sensors, life support and stuff, I usually leave those on a one. Um, this is just kind of a basic thing. You can actually do this in the game on your right panel. Um, so I'll show you how to do that when we... Uh, set our firing groups okay so this is the build basically this is what we're going to build in the game and um, you can actually find places to do this build by pressing this stations that sell build and this is going to route it to eddb and it puts in all your modules and the ship and if you just come down here uh, reference system we're going to put in okanura which is our home system for the edf Find stations, and sure enough, Fisher Terminal and Bennett Gateway, both of our key stations, uh, can sell this entire ship. Okay. Um, another thing you can do if you're buying something a little more expensive, uh, then it might be worth making it Li Yong Rui. And this guy is our Chinese knockoff master, and he gives you a 15% discount. So then you could search. And any of these stations that you buy it from would give you a 15% discount. Um, but since this is, you know, that really isn't going to make a whole lot of difference with the money. Um, I would just do it all at Fisher because you're there. Um, one thing with the discount, though, especially on the more expensive ships, uh, it affects the cost of your rebuy if you're supposed to get destroyed. So, or if you do get destroyed. So, if, if you pay, you know... 85 million instead of 100 million for your ship, then your rebuy will be less also, okay? So keep that in mind. When you're doing more expensive stuff, use the Li, Li Yong Rui. Wow, I actually said his name right. Okay, so going back to this, let's go over and take a look at the game. Okay, so we're here, we're at Fisher Terminal. We're going to go over here to the shipyard. And we're going to look at some awesome ships, not stored ships. Uh, Sidewinder, yeah, we already had that one. Ooh, Federal Corvette, yeah, now we're talking. I don't think you have the money for that, though, so um, <laughs> let's go this way. We're going to go find ourselves a Type 6. Type 6 Transporter, okay? Looks like it costs a million credits to buy. Um, and like I said previously, by the time we're all in equipping this thing, um, you're going to be at about 3.8 million credits. Um, if, if you don't have enough credits to fully outfit it, you might consider just putting cargo bays in it uh, and maybe making a couple cargo runs. And I can show you how to do that um, at a later time. So keep that in mind as well. Um, Okay, so now we've, we're in our Type 6. And uh, let's go to Outfitting and set this bad boy up. Okay, so hard points, we're going to have two mining lasers. Now, go into Mining Tools, 
And there's a couple different types of lasers in here. You see this one that has the little turret symbol? Um, that's not what you want. The turret allows you to use like multi-crew in a multi-crew ship and let other people shoot the turret. Um, that's totally not what you want. What you want is the fixed one, which has this little fixed symbol, the, the crosshair, um, which means that it's fixed to the front of your ship. Um, and you can just hit exchange, get rid of the pulse laser. You're not going to need that. Okay, we'll swap out the next one. Mining tools, fixed mining laser, perfect. All right, so now we got our two mining lasers. Uh, utilities, nothing on the build, don't really need anything. If, if, you're, if you're paranoid, you could always run a chaff launcher, I guess. I don't know. If you do, make sure you got a hotkey burn bound for it in your uh, options. Um, that way you can just hit the chaff button and shoot chaff. Um, okay, go into core internals. So if we follow the build, we know we need a 3B power plant. Okay, 3B. Exchange. Uh, we're going to put 4D thrusters, D like dog. Again, these are the lightest. Uh, for frame shift drive, all the way down to the bottom, we need a 4A. Absolutely. That'll give us the maximum jump range. You can see down here at the bottom how it just jumped our jump range up. Um, also, you can see our power. Now we have way more power because we got bought that bigger power supply or power plant. Um, uh, life support. We're going to get the 2D here. And it's kind of cool. As you look at all these modules, um, you can see down in the power area how it affects your power. Uh, so we're going to go 3B. And you can see that in the red, it's going to use a little bit more power than... The one that's currently installed, which is fine, because you want you want power distributor because that's what pumps the power into your lasers. If you leave the E-rated one, then you're going to be really regretting it. Let me tell you, uh, 2D sensors. Okay. Now we're going to go to optional internals. Uh, now this already has four E cargo racks installed, but these are five size five slots. So we want size 5 cargo racks. What a waste. I don't know why they do that. So exchange those. Exchange this one for a size 5 cargo rack. So that's, you can see how this is currently this cargo ship. It has a lot of cargo racks and stuff in it. Um, if you highlight the cargo rack, down below it tells you total cargo, 8 out of 82. Um, oh, that's probably because I already have some limpets and my cargo from my other ship. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, all right, see how this has a size three in it? Well, actually, okay, following the build, hang on, back up. So we are putting a 3B collector limpet controller in here, and that controls the limpets that go around and collect things. Um, the reason why I take the B is because, well, first of all, it's half the cost of the A, and second of all, the the, I actually think it's better because it, um, it it gives you more more range on the limpet, so it'll go further to pick things up. Uh, the A has a little bit less range, but it has more limpet lifetime, which isn't that useful, I don't think. I prefer the range, so we'll take the B. Uh, limpet controllers come in sizes 1, 3, 5, and 7. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a 4. Um, okay, so the size 4, normally you would put another collector limpet in here, but we're going to go with a fuel scoop. Um, normally you'd grab like a 4C because it's cheap, but you know what, I'm rich, so I'm going to grab the 4A. Sorry. <laughs> Just because I can, right? Um, shield generator, um, I think we had on here the 3C biweave. Nice thing about the biweave is it has... It's not as strong as like an A shield, um, but it's cheap and it also has really good regen. So if you bump into a rock or something, it's going to regen. Now, don't confuse this with just the plain old 3C generator, okay? You want the 3C biweave. 
Biweaves only come in a 3C. They don't come in a 3A, just FYI. Um, so there's your biweave, okay? Uh, the two slot, we're going to put a prospector limpet. Um, I think I just put the 1B in here just because it's uh, cheaper. And you don't really need a whole lot of distance on it. Um, the A, let me see, the A has a little bit more range. The A also weighs less. Um, but the A is, well, I guess it's only 5,000 cheaper. Maybe we'll get the A. That's fine. It's here. We'll get it. Uh, refinery. This is what, you know, melts your bars. So let's find the refinery. And you could get an A here also if you have the money for it. Uh, or the B, which is like a third of the cost. And the only difference is how many bins it has. But since you're doing targeted mining, um, you don't need that. It's not worth paying a million for an extra bin. Because um, we're only going after like one type of metal anyways. Okay. Um, and then super cruise assist, sorry, you gotta go bye bye because we are we need a surface scanner. You have to have the surface scanner. Like I said, you're not gonna know where to drop into the ring if you don't have a surface scanner. Okay, so that's pretty much the build. Um, we could go into livery. <laughs> Let's see if we have anything cool for the type six. Any paint jobs? Oh, I got Azure. <laughs> All right. Maybe we'll do some uh, some red mining lasers here. All right. Well, you get the idea. Okay. Oh, some red thrusters. Bitchin'. Okay. All right. Well, anyhow. Okay. So now we have our cool Type Six and Azure. Um. <laughs> next step. Exit out here. We're going to set. Our firing groups okay so how I recommend doing your firing groups is you're gonna have one firing group that's your detailed surface scanner and then prospector limpet maybe I'll set this one to one okay and then your next group what I like to do is I like to do the mining lasers on one and your collector limpet controller on the other if you had a second collector limpet controller, um, it would be right here. You would also bind it to two as well. And I'll show you that when we get where we're going. Um, yeah, so, um, so the spot that I like to go to, oh, first of all, let me show you how to get rid of and buy and sell limpets. So if you come down here to advanced, advanced maintenance on the bottom right, and then go to restock and then limpet control you can buy or sell limpets uh, when you actually go to mine you're going to want to fill up on limpets but since we actually have to jump out there um, there's not really any reason to fill up yet there's a station out there we can go to so the system we're going to go to is called Gura Brew. Gura Brew. And from Okanura, it is 97 light years. And interestingly enough, um, oh, let me show you something on your galaxy plotter here. When you're plotting on this tab, make sure you're not on economical. Because if you're on economical, it's going to take you 100 jumps to get there. You want to do fastest route. And also, what you can notice is, see how this, this path is a solid orange? That means that we're not even going to need to refuel to get here. So, you know what? I'm going to go back and I'm going to pull that fuel scoop off. So we don't even need the fuel scoop for this. Okay? So, outfitting. Optional internal. Ditch the fuel scoop. We'll get a 4B collector limpet. Exchange. Hey, we're actually saving some money. Okay, so now we have both collector limpet controllers. We're going to go over, set our fire group. Okay, so we're going to set that to two. So we got mining lasers on one, uh, collectors on two. This is also a good opportunity to go set our power priorities. So by weave shield, we'll put that on priority two. Thrusters can stay on one. 
cargo hatch. Let's make that like a, a three. Sounds fine. Uh, mining lasers can be a three. Maybe we'll make the hatch a four. Um, collector limpets could be a three. Collector limpets a three. Refinery can be a three. Prospector limpets can be a three. Sensors, that kind of stuff. Okay. All right, there we go. So we got power priorities just in case something happens. You know, it, it usually doesn't, but hey, you never know. Um, we also, since we changed the weight of our ship, we need to go back and recalculate our route. So an easy way to do that is just to switch from economical to fastest. Okay. And let's see here. We're going to have five jumps to get to Gurubu. And Gurubu is literally right next to the system where we're going to mine for Paynite. Um, Paynite goes anywhere from 200 to 400k a ton. Um, so it can be really good money. So let's let's take this thing for a quick spin, and um, I'll catch you over in Gurubu. So let's go. Ooh. Oh, I hit something. See why we put that shield on it? I don't think I've ever flown a Type 6 before. I'm going to boost. Whee! Got lots of radio traffic. Let's go boost. Let's get out of here. All right, now we're jumping. So I'll catch you guys when we get to Guru Brew. Okay, guys, so we just jumped into Guru Brew. We're going to check for Kratman Hub. It's kind of a great little mining base here. Um, if you brought a fuel scoop, I would go swap it out for a collector Olympic controller. They sell them here. Um, also, you're going to need to pick up a full load of collector limpets. So we'll grab some fuel, we'll grab some collector limpets. And we'll get this party started. Now, when you're in Super Cruise, always remember the 7 second rule. When you're getting to 7 seconds, decelerate 75% throttle. Um, there's a key bind you can set for that in your key binds under throttle. So um, I don't use a key bind. I just turn my throttle down manually, and I've done it so many times that I'm just used to doing it. And usually if you hit that 75% at 7 seconds and you avoid any of these other planets and stuff, then usually you'll be in pretty good shape. Um, another tip, if you look at the uh, bottom left over here, at the station picture, uh, that's actually how you're going to approach the station when you come out of Super Cruise. So you can actually kind of fly and get lined up with it better, just to make you know your your docking a little quicker, or if you're smuggling, make it a lot easier to get into the station, especially when you're silent running. Also a pro tip, once you're under a million meters per second, you can actually speed up. Because <laughs> you just have to be under the million meters per second in order to uh, drop out of Super Cruise. Um, so we dropped out of Super Cruise, we're going to request docking. Alright. Again, there's no auto dock on this, so you're going to have to uh, dock it yourself. Um, moving the throttle into the blue will help you maneuver better. Four pips into engines, maximum power in engines, two pips in shields, uh, just in case you do hit something. Uh, we're going to pad 18. I see pad 18 right there. 
Um, also, you can tell where your pad is because the little compass gizmo right here next to your radar will point you in the right direction. Uh, put down your landing gear. Use your vertical thrusters. And a pretty easy landing for this little Type 6. Oh, guess we're a little far forwards, aren't we? I'm used to flying a bigger ship. Uh, the Type 6 is a small ship. It can fit on a small pad. So it can carry, for a small ship, it can carry over 100 tons fully equipped for cargo, which is pretty good. Um, all right, so let's come in here. We refueled, grabbed our fuel. We're going to grab some limpets in the advanced maintenance, restock. Um, there's also a lot of carriers and things around here where you could grab all this stuff. Um, I'm just going to fill up on limpets. I know I'm not going to need quite that many, but if you're a beginner um, and you're doing this for the first time, just grab a full load of limpets. You can always dump them out as you go, and limpets are cheap, so you might as well just grab a full load. Um, go into your galaxy map. If you go into the squad bookmarks, down at the bottom, you'll find Double Pay Night, and this will take you to the Double Pay Night spot. Um, and it should automatically route you to the planet. So go ahead and launch, put up your landing gear, give it some throttle. Boy, this thing's fast. Now, if I didn't already mention it like five times, don't come here and open. Uh, there are players that will just kill you just to kill you. Like, they're not even pirates. They don't even want your loot. They just want to kill you. Because they think it's entertaining to greet other players. So, you know, for activities like mining or engineering, I, I don't even bother to play in open anymore. It can be fun if you have a private group. Uh, maybe get a couple people to go mining. Uh, and what's cool about that is if you prospect a rock and everybody shoots it, it'll put off way more stuff. So basically, it'll put off a load of stuff for everybody. Um, and, and that makes it go way faster, because you don't have to find as many rocks, right? Um, so, so it's kind of cool to go wing mining. We used to do that a lot. Make a shit ton of money. Back when paint height was like a million a ton. Not that much anymore. But as a beginning mining tool, you can totally do this. Um, so, so the... The route already routed us to the planet, uh, so we just follow the compass, get aligned with it. Um, just in case it didn't, if you pull up your system map, we're going to this little planet right here that's tucked in between the two big ones. This is the one that has our double pay night hotspot. And it's going to be kind of a long trip. Which, I'll cut this out, of course. Okay, so we're approaching, and we're going to come into this kind of slow. So remember seven second rule, maybe a little bit slower, because um, we're not actually trying to jump into the planet. Um, we're going to go to the ring. You also want to approach the ring perpendicular, so you can see the ring. So we're going to come up at an angle. There we go. Now, because I've scanned this ring before, um, I can already see all the hot spots on it, see all those orange dots. Uh, but just so I can show you how to do it, 
what you want to do is bring up your firing group with your surface scanner and you want to move closer to the planet until it says that it's in range or going too fast right now it just says out of okay so too fast hit your firing group for that your trigger and then you may need to set some keybinds but basically you want to move your rectangle until it says ring and there's two rings here you're going to want to map them both so you fire a probe at the first one and you'll see when this hits it's going to highlight the ring that it hit well i guess it wouldn't highlight it because i already hit it and then you're going to hit the second ring so fire one there um, and then you'll be able to see just like i am okay so now what you do is you're looking for two painite hot spots see how these all are labeled we're looking for the double painite one um, in an easy way to find this our buddy niles actually told me this go into your filters uh, turn on points of interest and then look for two painite spots that are close together here they are painite painite so this is probably where, where it is so we highlighted it and let's see if it says painite painite here come in a little closer yep painite hotspot painite hotspot okay so now what we're going to do is see how these are both circles that overlap each other. We are going to drop into the overlap, okay? Just like a uh, Venn diagram, if you've ever heard of one of those. Or look that up on Google. And you want to approach this very slow, because if you hit this too hard, you're going to take damage. And sometimes I think if you hit this too hard, you'll actually not drop into the actual hot spot like it'll just drop you into a generic ring so we're going to hit this at under a million meters per second and we're just going to go straight into the ring Ta -da, boop drop it too close okay now we're in the ring um i always recommend turning on night vision uh just because the light can vary and then you want to highlight you want to lock on to one of these locations that way you can use it as a direction indicator that way you're not mining the same rocks over and over so there we go we got a direction okay so something you need to keep in mind is this spot is going to have pirates you can see them flying around on the radar don't come here with anything in your cargo other than limpets okay because if you do they will blow you up and you're in a type six with no weapons hardly any shields no engineering so you're kind of a sitting duck um so usually what you would do is sit here and wait for the pirates to scan you sometimes instead of pirates you'll just get miners see this guy down here mining um i don't think we're gonna get pirates uh make sure you deploy your hard points that's how you fire up your lasers and also make sure you're in analysis mode. Uh, that's M for the default keybind. Um, you know, if that doesn't work, check your keybind. I think this guy in this crate is, um, those guys are mining. So yeah, see a mining, mining beam. Looks like there's another miner. So we got miners this time. We didn't get pirates. I think it's safe to go start mining. Okay. So basically, the name of this game is just pick a rock, uh, keep going in the same direction, and look for rocks that have 20% or more painite. Um, also, I recommend starting out with rocks that aren't spinning very fast, or at least not spinning in a weird direction, because um, they can kill your limpets as you send them out to collect things. Okay, I'm going to launch a prospector limpet. So make sure you're going slow enough that your prospector doesn't explode as soon as you launch it. So that's sub 140 meters per second or so, which I think I just exploded that one. So let's try again. Okay. Uh, every time you launch a prospector limpet, the old one is going to die um, as you launch the new one. Target it as you launch it. Um, 
That way you can read. So this one, this rock, good first rock, has 25% pay night. So basically it says minerals remaining 100. As you mine it, the minerals will go down. Um, it has gallite and pay night, 25%. And then material content low. What the material content means is basically each chunk you pick up could be a low, medium, or high. And you'll get the most yield from a high. So this is kind of a low rock, low end rock, 25%, low material content. But you know what? I would mine it anyway. So, um, so the first thing you do is look at the rock and the way that it's spinning. You want to shoot your lasers at the axis of rotation. Okay? So basically, you're looking at it spinning like a top. And you want to be on the top of the rock. Okay? The second part is as you're shooting, you want to point down towards the middle. And what this will do is this will shoot the materials towards the bottom of your ship so you, that's easier to pick up. Um, the, the thing to keep in mind also is the mining lasers. Uh, the range on them is like 500 meters, so you got to be very close to the rock. However, you don't want to be too close or else your prospector limpets will fly into the rock and die whenever you let them, or your, uh, not your prospectors, your collectors, will die as soon as you launch them. So, okay, so here we go. We're going to mine, uh, put four pips into weapons, probably two pips into shields, and start shooting rocks. Don't launch your collector limpets yet, because I got something else to show you. Um, so we shot maybe 15% of this rock so far. I'm going to go over to my contacts. And see all this gallite? We do not want gallite. So make sure you add it to your ignore list. Okay, I've already got it on my ignore list. That's good. Um, uh, I don't ignore platinum. I keep platinum. Um, platinum's a good one. to, to uh, It sells very well also. Um, so yeah. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead. Hold down your trigger for your collectors and launch all four of your collector limpets and then don't forget to put your cargo scoop down so your collector limpets you can see on your radar they're collecting ore and basically we're going to sit and shoot this rock until it's depleted and hopefully this rock will give us maybe five tons of painite um, probably worth one to two million so very little effort to get a whole bunch of material worth money. Um, keep in mind that 3B power distributor is not the best, so you got to stop and let it recharge a little bit, even with four weapon, four pips to weapons. You don't want to overheat your lasers or anything, and just keep mining. And once this rock's dead, and the limpets have collected all the stuff then we'll move on to the next one. Um, something else to keep in mind is when you uh, launch the collector limpets, do not target the, the pieces of stuff. Um, keep nothing targeted or keep the prospector limpet targeted because then they'll just keep collecting stuff. Like the same limpet will bring you, you know, 10 different things. Um, and when you start seeing up in that top right, see how it says no valid collection targets? Um, that means that they're running out of things to collect, which is good. Um, this rock, okay, see, see how now it says it's depleted? So basically I'm going to wait a minute, let my collectors finish picking up all the good stuff. And now that they're telling me no more valid targets, I'm going to switch back to my prospector, and I'm going to find another rock to uh, prospect here. And usually I just go from whatever the closest rock is or whatever rock's in front of me. Um, you know, just remember to go in the same general direction. All right, I'm going to launch Prospector at this rock. We'll see how it is. It's kind of nice because it's not spinning. So that'll make it really easy to mine. Hip it, assuming it has good stuff in it. Survey says... Nothing. That's a whole bunch of garbage in that one. So we're going to keep going. Next closest rock is maybe... Oh, it's hard to tell sometimes. 
Maybe this guy over here, since he's not moving, we'll prospect him. Uh, no pain out there either. This one's moving way too fast. I'm just going to skip it. We'll do this one down here, though. It's moving kind of weird. See how it has an eccentric orbit or an eccentric rotation? That can be kind of difficult to find a good spot. You might lose some collectors on it, but that's okay. Uh, Galli. It's garbage. All right, let's go find another one. This one's moving kind of fast. One thing to keep in mind, too, is that the, the asteroids might rotate, but they do not actually move. So, you know, you end up wanting to hover, um, you know, pick your spot and hover. Jesus, that's Galite also. Man, we're kind of striking out. It's the curse of the camera here. But see how the material content was high? That's too bad that wasn't Painite. That would have been a good rock. And if you check your inventory, so far we have five tons of Painite from that first rock. Uh, okay, here's one. 26% painite. Uh, it also has some gold. Gold's actually not that valuable um, for mining, so we would ignore the gold. Um, so when you shoot this rock, right away go over to your contacts and ignore it. Um, this rock also is kind of spinning weird, so you know, be, be cautious. Use your vertical and uh, lateral thrusters if you need to to get into a good position. And then start blasting. And your collector limpets, you'll still have a bunch around. Um, you can see over here, kind of on the left side of your HUD, it says 0 out of 53. So that means I have 53 left in my inventory and 0 left to deploy. So that means I still have my four collectors out and they're doing their business. So, um, you know, as they die, they crash into rocks, they crash into each other. Um, definitely deploy more. You always want to keep four of them out. So that's pretty much the basics of laser mining. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this on hold, and I'm going to finish up this whole run and get us close to a full run, and then we will figure out what to do next. All right, so we're continuing to mine, um, and I just wanted to give you a quick little tip. So. If you start getting like a clogged refinery or anything like that because you're trying to ignore all these weird uh, things, all these weird minerals, uh, make sure you come into your inventory tab on your right panel and go down and check your hopper. Okay, This is your refinery that you installed and you can actually come over here and eject weird stuff um, if you need to to clear it out. You know, Make sure it's just got the painite in it. Um, also, you might see engineering materials like material iron. Um, make sure you're, those aren't ignored. Iron is good. That's an engineering material, and it won't actually take up room in your uh, cargo because that will go to your engineering material section, which is right underneath your car your hopper. Okay, so these are all your raw and manufactured materials. Um, and they come in different grades, like grade 1, 3, 4, see the symbol difference, 2 has two marks. And then you have encoded, which are like your firmware type electrical stuff. Um, yeah, so definitely make sure you're picking up all those materials, because uh, they're free, basically. Um, and iron, I think, is used for engineering your multi-cannons. So yeah, definitely pick those up. Uh, keep your hopper cleared out, and once you're full of painite, you can actually come in here, like let's say your inventory is full, you can eject, uh, abandon these limits, limpets, like maybe do five or ten at a time. Um, and if you abandon them, then they'll be ignored. You also might want to come over onto your contacts and make sure that these canisters of limpets are ignored, okay? Or else your limpets could run around and pick them up again, and that's not good. Um, or they might pick up other people's limpets that you're mining with. So, pro tip, uh, finish up your 64 tons, fill this ship up, and then I'll show you how to decide where to go sell.
Okay, so we got our 64 tons of painite, or at least as much painite as we felt like mining tonight, which for me was about 10 tons. Come over to, this is Anara Commodities. Uh, you can pull this up just by typing in Google Anara Commodities. Um, type in painite, put in Guru Brew. I just put that in because it's easy to remember. That's the station that we went and bought limpets at. Hit search. And what you're looking for are your best imports. Okay. And then you can organize this by the sell price. So click there twice. And okay. So now you can see all the different places that are buying uh, pay night. Okay. Um, so this station is 252 light years. That is a long ways away. Um, and they're, they only have 2300 demand. So basically, if it... If you're trying to sell more than 25% of the demand, you're going to take price penalties. Um, so you want to avoid that, okay? You can also look for carriers. People will use carriers to buy pay night. Usually they don't quite pay as much. Um, however, um, you know, sometimes the trip might be short. Like they might be in the system already. Um, and you can just go do a quick sale there. Um, especially since you don't have an engineered frameshift drive. Um, so looking around here, uh, this is a carrier. I prefer to filter the carriers out. Um, and then I'm going to look for a place to sell with a reasonable price that's not a million light years away. Because remember, the jump range on our ship with cargo is only going to be about 120 to 130 light years. So to make one of these really long trips you're probably going to have to stop for gas at some point. And so it's kind of a risky a risky thing, um, you know, to just go. Well, here's, okay, so here's a station that is, it was updated eight hours ago. Um, there was 400 demand, which means that you can take 100 tons or less, 103 tons or less, and um, it's 56 light years away. So that's a pretty, that's a decent thing. It's paying 200k a ton. Not the best money, uh, but you know, if you have 64 uh, tons times 205,000 a ton, that's 13 million that you can make in less than an hour. Um, not bad for newbie money, right? Um, so that's, that's probably where in this run I would take it. You have to check this every time because, you know, these prices change daily. And they change as the market changes. Right now, pay night's kind of in a slump. Um, you know, another thing that you might consider mining is platinum. Platinum is an easy thing to laser mine. Um, just kind of looking at prices, let's just use Okanura for a comparison. Best imports. Uh, we'll filter the carriers. We'll sort by price. So there's platinum is selling for like 287 a K. And there's quite a lot of demand. Um, so I probably would have went and mined platinum. So it's always good to check this. Um, there is a platinum spot on my sheet if you come to mining spots. There's a double platinum. Um, it's 166 light years from my home system, which is kind of over by Okanura. Uh, so definitely take a fuel scoop with you. Um, but this is a really good spot for laser mining platinum. So keep that in mind. Um, so yeah, so go fill up, go go sell your goods, and make some money. Uh, buy a bigger ship. You know, with that kind of money, if you come to my builds, you know, a, a trip or two, you could actually get um, this Type 7 build. Let's pull it up. And this thing carries 192 tons of cargo. So, you know, that's a lot more money. It also has... Uh, uh, six collector limpets, three mining lasers, and a fuel scoop. And you could swap out this fuel scoop for um, for another uh, three collector limpets. So you could have nine collector limpets on this. Um, and if you come down to the cost, uh, without a discount, it's $38 million. Take 15% off that if you buy it at Li Yong Rui. Um, so yeah, this is definitely an option. 
The only disadvantage of the Type 7 is it's a large ship, so you can only sell at large stations. Keep that in mind. The Python can basically have the same exact build that it's a medium ship, but it'll cost you about $100 million. So, um, you know, buy Type 7, do the Type 7 for a little bit, and then buy a Python. You know, work your way up to the Python. The Python's probably the best mining ship in the game, um, just because it's so maneuverable. It has really good jump range. Here, I can pull up the Python mining build. You can fit all the core mining uh, stuff onto it. You know, all the core mining equipment, which makes it even better, because core mining pays a lot better than laser mining once you figure out how to do it. Um, so, you know, you basically have the same build as you had on the Type 7, but this is a medium ship with a way better jump range. So, um, you know, your minimum jump range with full cargo is like 24 light years without, uh, oh, I guess that is with FSD engineering. Without engineering, um, it's quite a bit less. So, you know, there's trade-offs. You know, by the time you get to this Python, you probably should have unlocked your first engineer. I recommend getting Farseer. Um, yeah, so definitely keep it in mind, go make some money, and if you need any help, definitely see us in game.